What's going on guys? I um, decided to learn how to weld. Why am I dropping this video series right now? Because I'm stalling. I don't quite have all of my other stuff for the budget build together, although that is coming out after this little mini series. We're gonna take a day to learn how to weld steel, and then we're gonna take a day to learn how to weld aluminum, and then that'll be that, and I'll give you my impressions on it, and well, I'll show you what I did. Some of it should be amusing, and some of it should be useful. All right, so this, this trailer has the worst fenders known to trailers, and it also doesn't have an extended disc like for a jet ski, and the trailer needs to be extended back at least about three feet or so, just so we can have like a cage where we can actually mount, you know, boat buckles. Because currently we're just using the tie strap, and that's just, not only is that really inconvenient, it's just not really good long-term for the boat's ability to not fall off the trailer during a serious bumper pothole in the highway. So we're gonna go and try and fix that. First by taking off these. We're gonna install those. I bought those. I'm hoping they'll work. They should just, I'll figure out what to do. Whether I have to mount on some bracket here or bolt them on or weld them on, figure it out. They need to go on. And for this particular project, we use the Vulcan Omni Pro 220 because it can do all the processes of welding for like fairly cheap. Plus I got a Harbor Freight credit card, which is good because then you had to buy some other shit, like a tank and gloves and a helmet and it was what it was. Really, if I would have done it all over again, I would have just bought the Titanium Easy Flux 125 because I ended up buying that on sale for $139, like as a last minute grab off the table from Harbor Freight. And I actually like the thing a lot more because it's just simple. Did you know that all you need to weld is a like spool of flux core and that welder in a standard house outlet? You could weld this afternoon. But I went and got the Vulcan, and I went and got a gas tank. But then I had to go get the CO2 Argon split tank and a stupid welding cart. And so I was out way more money. That was a fail. But maybe it'll be a win later. A lot of times I take hits on tools in the very beginning, and I wonder why I got them. But later on, I'm, I'm happy about it. I just, today's not that day. All right, let's get into it. The recommendation from a lot of people is start small, get a little Chicago Electric 90 and then move on from there. But I don't like really doing that. I find that once I learn a skill, I outgrow stuff pretty quickly. So I figured I'd get something that will like hold its own for quite a while. There's really huge, like very good reviews on the Vulcan welder. It does what welders like four times the cost of it can do. It will do MIG, TIG, stick and flux core welding. Pretty much anything that you're gonna deal with steel, it can do, but it really is only made for steel. Although it does come with a spool gun, and I've seen some all right results on aluminum to people who have managed it on. So maybe we'll manage that later. I do have a TIG torch for it. I bought the setup, but I'm probably going to return it because I'm not going to get TIG still. I doubt that I'll ever be in a position where I need to do something so elegant that it needs to be TIGged. I'll just MIG the crap out of everything. It has a really good manual and it has a little starter card. It shows you where to plug those outlets. I mean, one is the ground clamp and one is the actual MIG gun. And depending on which one it is that you're using, they have to be kind of swapped over, especially for stick welding with electrodes. We're just gonna use standard MIG wire. I wanted to do this because I tried flux core and you know, stuff caught on fire in my garage and I had holes burnt in my shoe. So solid MIG is pretty much flux core without the flux and the slag and the sparks. You use gas to shield it and because of that, it's a much cleaner process, although it does pretty much the same thing. It is also a pain in the A because you have to buy that stupid tank for it. If you go to welding school, you learn about processes and all the processes. But we're gonna go, I think C25 is what it is, because when I picked C100, it was not. So then 75, 25 argon split is what we actually want. 25 diameter, we have not that. I think we have 0.30. This is the 18 gauge. We're gonna do 16 gauge. That's what we're doing as far as the thickness. And this is the voltage. That's like the speed. The speed that's gonna put it out or five inches per minute, and this is the bolts. You can adjust these with a, with a dial here. We're gonna go ahead and leave them and then adjust them as needed. It should allow us to run it. Oh, it does, finally, look at that. There it is. Now we have achieved the wire feed. We go ahead and run the tip back in. And I know that you need extra these tips. Just FYI, fight, figure out what these tips are, why they're important, why they're like solid copper, and you'll ultimately need more tips. Like things you'll run in from the consumables, tips, wire, 
and a few other things, obviously gas. This thing just goes on like that. Right, so we're gonna use one by two by 316th inch square steel tubing to kind of fit inside the 1 8 channel that is in the parent part of the trailer. We're gonna use that to extend the part out so we can get rid of those bootleg fenders, put on real fenders, and also give a spot to where we can have like boat straps or bow buckles because there's currently none of that. The trailer is too short for the boat. There are two parent bolts holding the initial bootleg fender on. We are using that to mount the tubing and the new fender before we started any welding. All right, so that came out pretty much better than expected. Those fenders are the actual perfect size for this trailer. I didn't initially buy them and then got deterred because back then I didn't really know what I was doing or how to weld. We're gonna go ahead and figure it out because I spent a whole lot of money on this thing. We're gonna do it. But this came out good. Areas to put, you know, boat buckles on, areas to kind of extend the actual area to put a real fender, not those cheap fenders. You can actually stand on these and, and if you want to, although we're probably, since we're extending this, we might actually add little extension platforms to step on. I think that would even be much more useful. But the next step in all that is to add a cross member here. And we have that same piece of our 3 sixteenths. We're gonna go ahead and just measure it here, clamp it on and then cut it and then weld it. It would have helped me a lot to just maybe watch a few of these quick tutorials on YouTube. I really didn't want to do that. So I just kind of went off at it and just tried to learn on my own. But later on, I found that there were some new YouTubers in the mix that actually made pretty good videos that were easier to follow. And I probably should have just researched that. But nonetheless, I think bigger mistakes was trying to feed it from the side. You're supposed to feed it from above at a slight angle and you're supposed to keep the cup closer to get the gas to shield the wire more. And it's also, I was just running off stock settings. The people who I did watch the Vulcan tutorials from said that the stock settings that they kind of just go on because it, it just automatically computes the settings and you should try it from there. It actually did a pretty good job. I mean, in my opinion, in terms of what I was able to accomplish. Some of the welds were butt ugly, but that was kind of because of my technique. But once I kind of got the rhythm and the flow, and then I figured out how to stop doing stupid stuff like this, like, like there's like a volcano coming out of that, is it was too cold, I guess. I tried to mess with the wire speed, ran it too slow, and then I messed up the tip. Later on, I did that again in a different welder, so wire speed is pretty paramount. I also don't think I had my gas up high enough because there was some slight corrosion on parts of it. Although, you could definitely tell when there's no gas and when there's gas because there was total corrosion, like it's been rotting in the ocean for like five years. I complained about flux core, but it would have probably been a lot easier just to get on here and do it. It's just the angles like this where you're super close to the weld and you're like underneath all the sparks where I didn't want to use flux core at all. But it's actually a lot harder to mess up. So maybe I should have just done it. I also did some fairly stupid things here and there like this. Cool thing about welding is if you screw it up real bad, you could just grind it down and re-blast re right through the other parent weld. And then you can keep doing it. I, I would eventually imagine if you keep doing it too much, it's not great, but I mean, I beat it with a hammer. The, the manual said to beat your weld with a hammer. And if it breaks or cracks, then it's a bad weld. I'm not gonna beat it like to death. Gotta paint it and make it look good, but I think it's holding. Okay, so this is after a few welds where it actually looks like it's supposed to look. Minus a little bit of oxidation there, so maybe the gas flow is not fast enough. I said this and I am. But as far as the, the movement, so I thought it was too slow. It ended up, I just didn't know what I was doing. The actual stock setting on the, three, four, on the 316th gauge, on the 316th inch um, steel was actually a really good setting and I just needed to figure it out for myself. And before I was running away too fast and I was getting a lot of, some were absolutely horrific. Some of them started looking okay. Some of them looked all right. This one was the best one I did. I guess this Vulcan came with this whole thing showing you, does your weld look like this? If it does, it's just perfect. If it does, it's too fast. If, it's, if it's, it does, it looks like this, the polarities, whatever. And um, mine are starting to look much better. And so promising, because that's good, because I have other stuff that I'm going to be doing here pretty soon. And I need them to not look terrible so this trailer i don't care this trailer sucks <laughs> i'm trying to make it great again uh i will eventually have to take this boat off and uh 
take these bunk things off and then just make the bunk straight on the trailer and they would actually make the boat a lot better. But we can't do that until I think a little later. This one it was a little funky because I had to build it up and I probably could have done a better job, but for only an hour into this. That weld I'm pretty proud of. That looks substantially better because if you look at like the weld when I started out, it looks like dog doo-doo. Like if a bird came and pooped on this, this would have looked like. Over here, I got another really good one. Again, maybe I'm not running the gas high enough but you start to see it oxidize, just barely buried on the top, meaning something's happening with it. I think with the gas, what do you guys think about that? Where it's just, does that happen to you? Because when I look at the welds from people doing tutorials, I didn't see none of that copper going on. And as terrible looking as the other welds were, as far as utilitarian function, they worked really well. So that was the stock settings for just turning it to 3 16 to turn it off. Yeah, so I'm just gonna sand and prep and primer and paint this the same color as the rest of the stupid trailer and got those stupid fenders on, extended the trailer. Now I can put tie down straps that actually reach the boat and keep it from bouncing. You know, I have to use stupid that. So this trailer is actually meant for the boat now and I do like it. So all that was left now was just to kind of paint and primer it similar color to the parent metal frame, which is some Krylon stuff. And I used uh, Rust-Oleum Professional Primer yeah, I'm not going to put a whole lot of money into this trailer, but I'll tell you that it worked. <laughs> All right, so here's like the, I guess what you would call finished product. Dang, what happened here? Well, that's not great. I wonder what I did there. Clearly backed into something. The only thing I kind of bootlegged was I, I cut off and just re-riveted like this thing, but I used uh, stainless steel rivets once I started getting it and I just re-blasted right over, recut through the old welds. Made them better. You got these Strapino buckles which I think are a little bit nicer looking than the boat buckles. I have these in my Amazon store. I'll leave you guys in the link in the description below. They, they look pre pretty freaking sweet. They do the same thing. I like them. Should have added more little pad eyes, little 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 D-rings. I should add more of those. Initially, there's some bolts back here. I don't know if you can see those things. Where are they? Yeah, those bolts right here. That's what I had holding on here. And then once I, I started banging on it, it shook. So I did just come in here and give it a little weld seam there. And that seemed to have had stiffened up pretty pretty substantially also with the hardware but if that weld ever breaks the hardware is there to kind of save the bar stainless in there actually worked really really good pretty happy with the finished product all right guys so that's the first real welding project that i've ever done start to finish without somebody holding my hand and showing me what to do or it worked out pretty good like Leah's say i actually got on i got a lot of questions why i haven't used this boat in a while it's because i didn't really you know i wanted to fix the trailer and yeah, I could have stuck it in the back of my truck here, but why do that when you have a trailer? Really, it was, I just needed a little bit of time and I fixed it up and I started a whole series on that boat. You should check it out. Thank you, huge shout out to my patrons and channel members and anybody who buys from our store. You directly fund pretty much all the videos we're able to give out here to you, including stuff like this. We thank you so much. I'll see you guys out there. I hope you guys try something new like I did here today and expand your DIY experience and potential. See you out there.